a place to meet. Personally, I'm in awe when I see a stately and majestic tree. I'm taken back by its sense of timelessness, by its age, because I know that it spans more than one generation of humans. And when I see a large tree and I'm stepping back, I wonder what that tree has seen over its hundreds of years. If it could talk, what could it say? And today, when we, when we look at this tree and we have a planting, we know what this tree is seeing and standing witness to at its beginning. It is witnessing a community that is together. It is witnessing a community that is open. It is witnessing a community that is caring. And I know. And it is witnessing a community that has dreams for our children. And I know and hope, just as you do, that as this effort grows and as the tree grows, generations from now, when I am not here, that tree will stand witness to a community that has moved close to our collective dream of a great community. Thank you. Next in the is most of you know me, uh most of you know it. Uh is it loud enough? I will say a few words about John of Lying, whom I had the opportunity to meet earlier this year in January, January 15th actually. But before I uh, say a few words, since uh, we want to inspire younger children, I want that uh, Anjali and uh, Mimi to say a few words first, and then uh, then I'll, I'll say a few words. Okay, Anjali and Mimi. Hello, everyone. My name is Anjali, and I'm a junior at Bridgewater Raritan High School. Today, we are here to commemorate Mr. Jalal Kane. I will provide you with a brief bio on Mr. Kane and his instrumental works towards preserving the environment, and finish with a description of today's tree planting day. Mr. Kayleen is a mission child environmentalist and activist and forest forester from the River Island Nigeria. Nestled in northeast India, next to the Brahmaputra River, Nigeria Island is a giant sandbar that happens to be the largest river island on Earth. into a bustling forest ecosystem through the planting and tending of thousands of trees. That's equivalent to an area almost twice the size of Central Park in New York State. In recent years, the island has been our minds to it. This celebration also marks Bridgewater's achievement as a recognized tree city USA for the 19th consecutive year and honors the community for its commitment to effective urban forest management.
The Tree City USA program is sponsored by the Arbor Day Foundation in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service and the National Association of State Foresters. Okay, now you, you can see that I have a folder. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to speak up all the things in the folder. The reason is because when I was there, I took some photos. I thought to the extent I can show at least the people sitting in the front line a few photos. Uh, so I'm going to put it here and see if you can hear my voice. Uh, do you hear my voice? Okay, all right. Yeah, so I, uh, when I visited, uh, I visit Assam a few more times a year. Uh, I'm from the same not same town because it's not a fine town living in town, but we are in the same district. So uh, when I came to know about him, I wanted to uh, meet him. So I went, uh, collected a few friends and family members, for five or six of us, we went. So I'll explain to you even the journey, how it, uh, it's all about. So it is interesting. So uh, he lives uh, by the river bank. Now, Brahmaputra River is a very long river. It's about 3,000 kilometers. It's about two-thirds in China. It goes through the state of uh, Assam all across, goes to Bangladesh and eases into the Bay of Bengal. Uh, the river is, is really, uh, it, it, it creates problems. It is also the livelihood for many people. In monsoon season, uh, it's, uh, you cannot see from one bank of the river to the other side. For example, in Jorhat, town where General Piling uh, belongs to the district, the river is about 11 kilometers, which is about 8 miles wide. So you cannot see from one bank to the other bank. Now, uh, in monsoon season, it is all flowing in high speed. But uh, in January, February, there are sandbars created because the water bed goes down. So, and there are many sandbars. So, Majuli is known as the as uh, the river island. So it is not really one island. There are many islands. It, it, you know. Uh, so we, we know the biggest island, but there are many uh, sandbar islands. So the other story goes, and uh, so in the monsoon season, uh, water level is high, and then it dries up during the summer uh, if there is no rain at all. Uh, in, in, in a particular year, in early 70s, uh, it uh, became all dry, and uh, so in uh, you know, during the uh, monsoon season, there were you know, things are lively things were there, there were snakes, but when there is uh, no shade at all, all the snakes died. So seeing all the dead snakes, he was so sad. He decided that they need some shades because it is all sandbar, nothing in it. So decided to take the project onto himself. So that's how it happened. And he was only 17 years old at that time. Okay. So so we we're very inspired to see him. So we went now to go from Jorhat town to his uh, home in the in the bank of the river. It is uh, not accessible by a by a car. So we had to go in and taxi. So we organized that. And then he has a house where his. Uh, he lives on this side of the bank, and the other side, where his forest is, only way to access is via boat. So then we have to take a motorboat. So we took a motorboat and went. Now once we land up there, that is the forest in the boat. The only way we could go is in the back of a tractor. So we organized a tractor, and then so he joined us. And he took us to the middle of the forest, where his uh, uh, has, uh, so, so there are the two homes he has. So there are a few people settling on the bank of the river, but obviously, even though it is only about one, one and a half hour from a major town, there is no electricity. Because it is across the river on the other side of the river. So uh, you see a few, uh, I saw a few, I saw a primary school, I saw some uh, solar in, in, in one or two uh, places in the school, but otherwise, so there then, uh, you know, it took a long ride to go to the interior of the forest. The forest himself, as you know, uh, was uh, green and white. So, uh, so there, that's where then we went to uh, uh, his little hut. And as uh, Mayor Chris Paulson was saying, 
their heart was interesting. So it has uh, you know, one room, it has no wall. And uh, as he explained, uh, elephants don't want to see anything in front of them. So, uh, so uh, he has a raised bed. So his bed is essentially on the floor. And that's how it sleeps. And uh, there is a fire uh, place. So when you visit it, I thought I will, uh, you know, some of you will see it. I, I, I can show the power if I have here. You will notice that so we are we are taking a uh, going across the river on the back of, uh, of, the, of the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'll, I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on. Yeah. It might be here. And then this is his uh, this is his house. And so, so that's how he does. And and the whole. Uh, area uh, and it's a very interesting story about him uh, how he met his wife obviously his, his wife plays an important role too even though you don't hear as much so his wife's name is Benita now so how he met his wife so he uh, you know he knew a family uh, in the village so he used to go there and, uh, and their daughter uh, so they got to know each other and maybe he was hoping for an arranged marriage but the girl's Benita's mother did not want her daughter to be married to a man who lives middle of nowhere in the forest. So the Aryan marriage was not quite working out. So ultimately they decided to elope in a boat. <laughs> so so he landed up going to his uh, his mother's he didn't go to his mother, he went to his mother's younger sister's place. So she then came next day and convinced the girl's parents and they got married. They got married the next day. Uh, now, she's a very nice lady too. She, uh, she does uh, gardening. Uh, she gave me a few uh, cabbages as gifts. So, uh, young, petite woman and they have three children. But that big forest was not known for a long time. That's for going on for some 30 years. Uh, so when he got married, it was 15 years, the forest was developed, but nobody from the town knew that. So a gentleman by the name Zitu Kolita, who was taking a boat ride, saw that, okay, all of a sudden he see some ulcers flying and then some trees. So uh, again, he was a photographer. So that's how photography can reveal things that you cannot even think of. So he then went to see this forest. They thought that, okay, this is another, uh, another poacher. $8,000 a piece. So uh, the poachers are there. So they he thought that this another poacher coming and so you are getting ready to fight and things like that. They said, no, 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 no. All he's coming is to take a few photos. So that's how they became very friends. So G2 Kolita, the photographer, and he became very friends where they met each other in 2007. And then the story began to unfold. So he, uh, these are a few things I just quickly want to highlight. What are the things that even though he went to school, he himself was not uh, even a high school graduate. But he was conferred uh, Doctor of Philosophy by Guwahati University of Assam earlier, a couple of years back. Then he was invited uh, to Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi. Uh, they also observe in India what is called Earth Day. It was in uh, So he was conferred the Forest Man of India title, and then uh, our former president of India organized something. Uh, he passed away. Uh, uh, organized uh, an, an event in his honor, uh, and, and then the whole thing started. So earlier he was given the highest honor of uh, uh, the which is uh, the, the Bible given in the This year, then uh, he was uh, invited to uh, France. Before that, he was invited to France earlier, uh, a couple of years back. This is the second time. So France is very much into greenery. So there, uh, he was invited not for honoring as such, but to give a speech on a case study for ecology and planting. So he gave a talk. Obviously, he's a translator. Uh, so the, the group where he went, they 
they're known as the Modernist Economy Forum, and they, they did all that. Uh, and then uh, an NGO known as One Heart, One Tree Foundation, they are going to give him 5,000 saplings for plantation in Assam in the river island. So that's basically all that is happening, and uh, we are hoping that we are all inspired by him, and we can continue his legacy. And what he focuses is that plan for planet protection.